Now, source has no form, so the mind, race in the society, focused on form every single day, focused on people, places, things, knowledge in the mind, concepts. That's all the grass that's been covering the ground. So you no longer see the ground, you just see the grass. You just see, I am the body, I am the mind. I don't like this relationship, I prefer that one. I don't like this food, I prefer that food. I want to become this, I'm not there yet, etc., etc. That's the grass, that's the stuff that's been growing over your original naked state. The aim of self-realization or God-realization is to mow the lawn. It's to see the ground of being as clearly as you can see your own hand in front of your face. To see that you are God as clearly as you can see your hand in front of your face. To know that you are God. But in order to do this, we generally have to forget all the other stuff, at least for a moment. So see if you can forget who your parents were, who your children are, who your partner is. Maybe I shouldn't start with the scary stuff. Um, just forget that, forget about your job, <laughs> your bank account. But you get the point, as many concepts as you can notice, that you can clear, that you can relax, you can let go of. And don't worry, they'll still be there when you open your eyes. It's just an exercise. Just to let go of all the subtle energy dynamics, all the grass, that you've let grown on your naked original state. All the words, all the concepts, all the influences from other people's minds. Just kind of give that away. Forget your human life for just a moment. Forget memory. If you had no memory, who would you be? Without memory, it becomes really hard to claim any kind of identity in any object that appears to consciousness, to God. God is consciousness. God is alive. God is intelligence, awake. And it's formless. But most of us know only form. We've learned only to place our attention on form. To place our attention on the formless, the self, the subject, rather than objects. Most of us have never even for a second been aware of awareness itself. And so at first, it is a little challenging to maintain that. And so that's why I generally say, rather than trying to maintain that, Simply for a few seconds at a time, say two to five seconds, you radically and abruptly, just throughout your daily life, but do it right now, you radically and abruptly and totally commit to dropping any and all thoughts. Just complete full stop, full stop. Just two to five seconds. Just commit to it. And notice what remains. Notice what's looking at it. Notice this quality of clarity, of lucidity, of consciousness, of alertness, of awakeness, of I am, of I exist. It's a subtle feeling at first. So you radically give away all thoughts, all concepts, all ownership, all beliefs, just for a moment, 
be as naked as you can possibly be with the sense of I exist. Just purely the sense I exist. Just the sense. Not the words. They're just the entrance point. They're the door they open. But the actual experience, before any words, the pure awareness of I exist or I am. Awareness of being. Awareness of existing. Just that. It's as if the mind begins to turn inward, back onto itself. Instead of focusing on the world, it becomes aware of itself as the self, as the subject, as that witnessing presence. Once you find that feeling, you can practice you can practice it a little bit right now, but we won't have enough time to practice it for long periods of time. But as you go home, you can practice more of this. But for now, find the subtle feeling, even if only a few seconds you maintain it. Just a couple seconds of awareness noticing itself. Awareness saying to itself, I am aware that I am aware. I am that I am. That's a moment of pure being. Over time, you will become more interested in this. At first, it will seem a little boring for many. It's just a subtle feeling. But as you practice, it deepens. The rabbit hole deepens. And the kingdom of heaven will open up to you. Not to Jesus, not to me, not to Buddha, not to your priests, to you. The kingdom of heaven will open its gates to you. Direct Contact. Contact. No more slavery. No more seeking outside when you are God. For Christ's sake. Focus on I am. I exist. Because that, my friends, has never changed throughout all the issues, problems, challenges, victories in your life all the relationships that have come and gone, all the things you love that had to let go of, all the things you desire, some of which have come to pass, some of which seem to forever be outside your grasp. All that, all that human stuff has come and gone. But there is something about you that has never, ever, 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 ever changed. When you looked in the mirror at five years old, it's the same presence that currently hears my voice. Same awareness is currently staring at the mirror at a body that's five years old. It's the same you. It's formless. It's eternal. But once entered into, once surrendered into, once practiced more and more, once devoted to, it opens its gate to the kingdom of heaven. The love, in other words, and the light of the one infinite creator shall be known to you directly. The infinite formless vast expense of eternal joy, bliss, love, clarity, light, awareness will be revealed. And the gate the gate to this God state, which I often call the I or the I I. The gate to it is the I am, is the I exist, is that pure sense of being. Remember when you were one year old, or maybe you don't remember, but you can imagine. 
Imagine being one year old, two years old, and you weren't thinking yet in terms of words. You had no words in your mind. How liberating, just that alone. Now everything is filtered through words. But before you knew these words, picture yourself as a one-year-old. Was that one-year-old version of you not experiencing some form, some level of I exist? Was it not being? It knew I am pre-verbal, before concepts, before words. You want to go back to that state before the words I am. I am as a word is just a teaching, it's a pointer. Follow the pointer back to yourself, which is the subject. It's not really, it's more than the subject, but it's a good entrance point. Go to the subject, not the objects of your life. Who's the subject? Feel, see if you can feel the subject. And it's like a gradient that as you enter into it, it expands, it becomes brighter, more intense, it opens up. It's like a secret that keeps unfolding, like a mystery that keeps knowing itself deeper and more intimately and more joyfully, more blissfully with every go at it, with every practice run. But the beginning stages of this is simply the subject, you, when you say I, you mean the subject. You may not know this, but you do. The subject of life, right? The subject of your life is you. And everything that you observe comes and goes. But you are the subject to those items. You've always been around. There's one aspect of you that's always been around with your life. Everything that has a form has come and gone. But you, when you say me, that me, that innermost sense of I, of me, that's your access point. That's your gateway. And start wherever on the gradient of love light you find yourself feeling the me sense. For some people, it may just be intellectual at this point. It's quite OK. Take it deeper. Over time, it will deepen. For some people, they may start to quite instantly feel a wave of bliss and joy and expense. And like the world starts to sort of fade out a little bit. And there's a love and a light that starts to take over and become brighter and brighter. And some may at some point, who knows, may even be now, have the realization that this is all there is. There only is love light awareness. The world is actually an illusion. You've never been anything but awareness, love light, eternal, infinite, forever and ever and ever timelessly free. And forms are just imaginations by the mind. But you see, it's a gradient. You have to start with where you're at, and immediately you will begin to taste the benefits of this practice. So for two to five seconds, that's the beginning. For two to five seconds, you stop all your mental activity. You stop looking outward for objects, places, people, things, and thoughts, just for a few seconds. And you notice the subject that remains, the innermost sense of me, the innermost sense of I'm aware, I exist, I know this moment. And you stay with it just as long as you can, just a few seconds, just linger on that fragrance. The more you do this, the more the kingdom of heaven opens up to you. The more Christ consciousness starts to pervade your consciousness. Because it's the same one consciousness, ultimately. And the more you sort of let go of the world, your version of the world, your thoughts about the world, your thoughts about your life, if you dare to just kind of relax that for a moment, relax all that memory, relax all that tension, and you can do this gradually, depending on how comfortable you are with sort of the free fall into relaxation. But the point is to give away your world, because it creates the ego which veils the truth. 
It creates a separate sense of subject rather than the wholeness of the self. So give away as much of your life as you can, mentally, right? I'm not saying you should quit your job right now and all that stuff. I'm just saying during those exercise moments, you give away all ownership, all tension, all attachment to any of that as much as deeply as you can. And you relax into that letting go. And for some people, even this will just take some time. The body might shake a little bit, or you might come up against some fear for letting go of those mental ideas that you believe you have to hold so ten with so much tension. Otherwise, they'll disappear from your life. Right? So even the process of just relaxing attachments is already a challenge for most people. And that needs some time to relax and unwind and gain some trust in the process, gain some trust in the unknown, in the free fall of what remains, the space that remains, when you stop thinking about your life just for that period of time. It's called meditation. Look it up and Google it. So the deeper you let that go, and the more your awareness turns inward onto itself, it's like a mirror starting to reflect itself, bend over to see itself. Awareness, aware of awareness, awareness watching awareness, awareness seeing awareness, awareness knowing, feeling awareness. You intensify that, and it will overwhelm your sense of a world, your sense of separation, your sense of mental anguish and sorrow and pain. And it will begin to radiate within you, within the body, mind, spirit complex. A light is activated. And the more it's nourished, the more it grows, the more it radiates, the brighter it becomes. If you are a seeker, then seek for this. If you are not a seeker, then seek for this also. Because whatever else you're holding on to is just a placeholder for this in the end, anyway. You're just wasting time, really. This is to know the creator within. And it will unfold. It does not remain an intellectual statement of awareness, watching awareness. Those are just the words. It becomes a lived, radiating, illuminating, Vibrant, alive, lucid, conscious, heightened experience. You start to raise your frequency, elevate your consciousness, and you start to begin to feel and understand and directly know the oneness of God that is your birthright, that is your nature, that you cannot ever escape no matter how hard you think. That which saw you in the mirror at five years old also sees you thinking your ass off. It never goes anywhere. Because it's covered with grass, it feels quite dull, like a dull sword, or like a dim light covered with dust. But as you start to mow the lawn, clean the light bulb, the more naked the more pure you become in that awareness, the more the light and the love of God, if you will, of source, begins to radiate through your pores, through your veins, through your mind, through your thoughts, through your actions. And you will directly know more and more closely the one infinite creator, the one self in all selves. And it will be your personal liberation simultaneously, which is great. <laughs> 